Hey guys, welcome to Peloton Pits. Today is all about a direct heat party rib. Spoiler alert, I've already tried one. You have to wait to the end to see how fantastic they are. All right, to get started, our Weber is warming up. We have two slabs of St. Louis style spare ribs. We're gonna cut those up. I've seen a ton of things online lately about party ribs. Not too long ago, we did direct heat ribs and being a charcoal fan that I am, I absolutely loved them. Like really, really liked them. Uh, I think it came out fantastic. So today is all about direct heat party ribs. Shout out to a guy that sent this to me. Um, it happens to be made in Tennessee. And he said, hey, I've got a friend that bottles his own barbecue sauce. Would you mind trying it? So today is the debut of that. I have no idea what it tastes like, but we'll give it a go. So simple enough, we're gonna cut the party ribs or the St. Louis style ribs into in each individual piece. We'll be able to grill them. Um, I might mop them a little bit. I don't know, I might keep that back a little bit. Shouldn't take long. Should be a pretty easy video, but I'm pretty excited because I think it's gonna impact a ton of flavor. And that's what it's all about. All right, nothing to it. We're just going to split the rib and go straight down. All righty, now we're just going to season the ribs up. I'm going to use that Texas all-purpose rub, salt, pepper, uh, garlic, and seasoned salt. I was going to use Q that, but if you think about it, when you're using direct heat, this has a little sugar in there, and I was worried about it burning too fast. We might be able to use that at the end, so just gotta be careful about that. Whether it's my seasoning or anybody else's, if it has a lot of sugar on there, you do direct heat, you gotta be careful. So, simply enough, we're just gonna season all sides. Something like that. All righty, don't knock it till you try it. You guys know I rock that smoking pecan pellets uh, when we do our uh, pellet smokers. Uh, last few times I've done my charcoal. The one thing I like about charcoal is the flavor, but I miss the wood flavor. A lot of times we add wood chips. If you got your pellets, just go ahead and add your pellets. And I'm gonna show you the difference in the smoke levels. And I'm gonna add this a couple times. You can already see that smoke rising through there. I'm gonna go bone side down first. I don't know if it'll matter but we're just gonna put these ribs all across the grill. When you spread out your charcoal, try to spread it out evenly so you don't have like hot spots that you're not aware of. I mean, look at the smoke now. That's all types of flavor inside the ribs. Kind of like the best of both worlds. You get the charcoal and the pecan flavor, perfect. All right, I'm not gonna wait long, five or six minutes. You guys see we're still smoking. You might have to adjust some of your ribs if need be for your hot spots. Whew. We can see right there is a good hot spot. So I'm just gonna rotate the grill. Take my pellets, just dump around the edges. And we're just gonna keep flipping as much as we need to. All right, 300's been kind of like the target goal. I just got a little apple cider vinegar. Once we flip them, we'll spritz them. Just keep them, keeping them rotated.
Like anything, you're just dealing with gas and brakes. So if you notice your temps getting up there, you know, obviously you can back this down a little bit. If it drops too low, just open your vents up, allow that oxygen to get in there. All righty, I'm just probe checking several of them just to get a, like an idea ballpark of where we're at. 160, 165 seems to be pretty close to where we're at. My target is roughly about 180 because I want these ribs to go up to about 200. So instead of just keep smoking them, if you notice, there's not that much color. So what we're going to allow, allow to happen is keep this lid open. Those charcoals are going to get a little bit hotter. And now we're going to start searing them back and forth. You just got to be very careful because you, you can have some flare-ups with that fat. Just so we can get that coal flavor and some char marks on our ribs. If you notice the tail pieces and the very small pieces, I'm just moving to the side. No reason to overcook those. Just taking those little bits off. See why I said what kind of barbecue seasoning to put on there? If you had a lot of sugar in your barbecue season, you'd be burning your ribs. But that's what we're looking for right there. Look at that beautiful color. That fat rendering out. All right, let's close that lid. Cool that down a little bit. All right, it doesn't take long. It's only been about 30, 35 minutes since we put them on. So I'm going to take these off. Start controlling our temps on the uh, the grill, dropping it back down a little bit. All righty, I just tasted this Big Mike's barbecue sauce. Definitely on the vinegary side, not much sweet. I can live with that. Typically, I tend towards the vinegar sauce. Some people might like it more, but we're going to up the flavor a little bit, a little bit more sweetness. Just trying to balance those flavors. So I'm gonna line the pan with that sauce. Give me a little brown sugar. Hot honey. Those flavors just might go together very well. Just mirroring those flavors of what you would traditionally use on a rib. Just throw some butter down. I mean, can we just get appreciation for how pretty those ribs look? I mean, that right there is almost good enough itself. Golly, that looks good. I'm going to put these uh, meat side down. And then we're just going to mirror those same things that we did uh, on the bottom. So the barbecue sauce, the brown sugar, the butter, the honey. Alrighty, just to protect the bottom so it doesn't burn, two zone system, move those coals over. Put that pan on it just like that. Alrighty, we've basically come up to temp, minus a few degrees. So what I'm doing now is basically kind of like just turning the ribs in the own sauce, kind of get them glazed. And I am going to just keep these on the grill a little bit longer. We will pull the ribs, keep the pan on the grill and let that sauce reduce. And that's gonna be our finishing barbecue sauce. It'll give you time to adjust the, the uh, flavors if you need to, if you want it more sweet, if you want it more vinegary, spicy, however you want it. Pull them off here. I'm actually going to put this pan while our ribs are cooling down back on the grill to let that sauce reduce a little bit more. Uh, took roughly about an hour and 20 minutes. That's with the ribs on the grill. Instead of keep reducing it, I'm just going to separate a lot of that pork fat and keep a lot of that goodness. Look at that stuff in there. That is all flavor. So I'm going to put that in there and separate it. Alrighty, the ribs are cooled, and I've just skimmed the fat off the top of this sauce. This is what's left of it, and this is what we're just going to come back over and just kind of like top these ribs with. Perfect for tailgating. You don't have to 
bring your smoker, you don't have to worry about power. Good old charcoal will do it. Hour and a half in, and you should have yourself some fantastic direct heat party ribs. All right, guys, I can't lie. You're not gonna get my honest reaction. My first honest reaction was when I took the first bite. I absolutely love them. Hour and a half, no brainer. Portable, that means you can like do them anywhere. Mm. Mmm. Mmm. Clean off the bone. The direct heat, then braised barbecue sauce. That barbecue sauce that we tried was definitely vinegary. I'm glad that we added the sweetness. It just balances it out. And I'm a vinegar fan. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, let me try a bite. <laughs> a clean bite. Because we got a party to go to. Mmm. I mean, just look at this. Mmm. I mean. You know, that has good, like, grill flavor. Even for only being on there an hour and 20 minutes. Adding those uh, smoke and pecan pellets, it definitely aids in the smoke factor. There's no way, if, ends, or buts about it. So you get the direct heat, you get the smoke, perfect balance. The vinegar barbecue sauce, along with a little sweetness, balance. Um... You could have left them on the grill a little bit longer. Depends on how you like your ribs. I'm not necessarily a fall off the bone type of guy, but you can definitely do that. I would take advantage when you're braising it versus just grilling it. And also just be careful about what kind of seasoning you use because you're over a direct heat. If you notice that at the very end, open that lid, like we mentioned, and was able to really get a char, which is what I enjoy. And ultimately, that's what matters. Not what my wife wants, what I want, because I want to <laughs> chow down on these bad boys. I might leave her one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace. Mm. God, them things are good. Mm.